Hello and welcome. I am Gohar Raza and you are watching Eureka, a special program that brings scientists face to face with the public of India. Scientific revolution happened in Europe. There are differences on the cause why it happened in Europe, why it happened in that era. Its roots are traced back to 12th century, however, it matured after Newton's Principia Mathematica. One of the causes of scientific revolution probably was development of scientific method. The other major cause is that science came out of the shackles of supernatural power. After scientific revolution, you did not have to invoke supernatural power to explain the laws of nature. But one of the causes that is very vehemently argued is the marriage of natural sciences and mathematics. Mathematics became the language of science. Today we have a special guest, mathematician Dr. Ekant Gatte. Welcome to Rajya Sabha channel. Thank you. How did you get into mathematics? Mathematics gives a shiver to most students, at least in India. Um, I have always enjoyed mathematics as a student. I enjoyed it in middle school, in high school. And I was never scared of mathematics because uh, I always found it to be a very beautiful subject. And when you find something beautiful, you usually are not scared of it. Um, I think there are lots of simi similarities with mathematics and music, poetry, art. Yes, you are. Yeah. So, uh, so students in a in, big way into yes, music as well. I also enjoy music a lot. Yes. So uh, this uh, interest in music, you yes. developed as a child, or you later on. So when you saw that there is similarity <laughs> between the two. No, no, I guess that usually doesn't happen once parents make you take some classes and you know, you are doing something on the side your whole life. Off and on I was learning the piano at, you know, I was living in many towns around you India. You still play piano? I still play but you know, I have two small children now and usually I'm running after them rather than <laughs> playing the piano but um, yeah, you, you, I used to take classes um, when I was in Lucknow for a few years um, and also later in the, in the Philippines there was a lot of music where I, where I grew up so I was taking some classes there. And then when I was a student in, uh, in Los Angeles, I could never afford lessons, they were too expensive but I could afford to rent a piano. It was so cheap to rent a piano but you could not actually, mm -hmm. you know, afford a lot. The lessons cost $100 but the piano was like $29 a month or something. So I had a piano at home and so you know I used to so play. So you continued. So I always with, continued. With. And so I was you know And that was an inspiration to do good mathematics. Uh, yeah, I think if you like certain, so there are lots of similarities. I think they're completely different also but there are lots of similarities. I mean, you know there's a very sort of rigid language in music. You have Correct. to sort of understand, you know, the beat structures and And tonality. the repeatability of this language. The repeatability and um, to recreate something which is on the page perfectly, things like that. Um, but there's also some aesthetic things about music which were very appealing to me and I think those And you things find transfer. similar aesthetics sure, in mathematics? Sure, sure, sure. I uh, sometimes give talks where I play a piece of music for the audience and everyone says wow and then I say I put a formula up on the board and I expect the same reaction. Of course there's usually pin drop silence but I try to tell people that if they understood this formula then they'd have a similar reaction. Yeah, Einstein once said that if an equation is not beautiful it must be wrong. Yeah, so that is part of the reason that we do mathematics. It's definitely not to bore people with thousands of pages of technical material. It's to create beauty and so that people can appreciate it and so even if the general public can't appreciate it immediately, at least the community of mathematicians can and we try and, you know, disseminate it as much as possible. You, you come from a family where three generations were highly learned people. Most of them were educated abroad and in the best of the institutions. And each one of them came back to India to serve the country and it was a very conscious decision on part of your grandfather, your father and then you. 
how did you get this this idea that I have to come back to India despite the fact that you had a very very beautiful life abroad, even as a child. Yeah. Those who live a basic middle class yeah. kind of life may not be able to adjust abroad, but you were brought up in Manila. Yes. So maybe one reason is I lived abroad as a child for some years. So the appeal of sort of escaping India and running abroad was never there with me. I spent five years when I was maybe between the ages of two and seven, perhaps in the US, my father was posted as in the consulate as economics attache. And also later in life, I was in the Philippines for four or five years when he was posted there. And I also studied there, you know, for my university and things like that. I studied in both places. I studied in school here. I did a bit of university here. I did a bit of university there. Do you remember Lucknow school? I remember my school quite well. Where you were admitted yeah, as yeah, a child. Yeah, I remember that very well. I was at St. Francis in Lucknow. And uh, um, so the appeal, I think, of going beautiful abroad. Beautiful building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very beautiful yeah, building. No, it's a beautiful yeah. place. Yeah, it was also a very good school. But the appeal of going abroad maybe was a little less uh, for me than other people. And let me say that in academics, as you both of us know very well, when you do well in your academics, you're always invited abroad all the time. And you're, you know, right. you're spending a week here, then a week there, and a week back here, and a month here, a month there. So even though you may be living in one place, you know, you're traveling the whole world. And so there's no, it's not so important to be, you know, living, living in, in any one place and, you know, so. And Mathematics knows no boundaries, like any any subject of science. True, true. So you always find people who are doing good mathematics, and yeah. they become your peer, they become your exactly, friend. Exactly, exactly. And that excites you continuously. Exactly. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, coming back to Lucknow, yeah. Uh, did you develop your love for mathematics in in Lucknow or later on? Maybe <laughs> I was very young. That was in class College. two to class five, maybe. I had, uh, I remember I had good teachers, but I think I, yeah, it was too soon. I mean, it was um, at, at, uh, at boarding school in Ajmer, I did have one uh, very nice teacher, uh, Mr. Shah. Um, I remember all the names of my teachers, so that must be. It say, wasn't parents who, who, who pushed <laughs> no, you to my parents have uh, always been very, uh, uh, I wouldn't say scared, but <laughs> they've, their reaction to math has been what most people's reaction to math is. <laughs> Let's stay away, from, keep a safe distance from it. Uh, my mother has so always been in the humanities. So they didn't tell you you are entering <laughs> into difficult waters? Mm, <laughs> no, not at all. My father is also an economist. And these days in, in economics, you have to be very good at math. But in his time, you know, when he was a student, yeah. he didn't, it, that wasn't true. And he had really struggled later, perhaps, when he was doing his PhD, because, you know, all these bright younger people were doing well, very well in the math part. And he was... No, I think the, my love for math just came from within myself. I somehow... Perhaps it really started flourishing um, when I did a few years in the Philippines in high school. I had two very good teachers, uh, Mrs. Heredia uh, and uh, Mr. Lamming. You remember their names? And I remember their names. And have Mr. you ever visited <laughs> back these schools? I have uh, been once to the Philippines. Uh, Mrs. Heredia, unfortunately, is no more. And Mr. Lamming was there for a short period on a contract. He had come in from, I think, England. Um, but they would encourage me to do things beyond the syllabus, which was quite unusual. So you could, you know, this, at this time, the IB was already available. It's just now becoming very popular in India. But at that time, it had already come to the Philippines. And you could do little modules of mathematics outside the syllabus. So he would call them and in. And that excited you. Call them in from Geneva and make me do something extra. And so that was, that was a very nice really experience. And I exciting. think that's important. When you feel you're really doing something beyond the usual calling, it sort of builds an interest in your... We'll yeah. come back to the discussion. Don't go anywhere. The discussion continues. We'll come back soon. Welcome back to Eureka. We were discussing with Professor Ekant Ghatte. You are generally uh, called by your friends as Eki. So you are comfortable with that? Sure, you can call me. Even after getting so many awards? <laughs> I've not gotten so many awards, <laughs> but... <laughs> uh, uh, let me come back to your education, which shaped you probably. You come back from Manila. And then you enter into St. Stephen's College. Now, from Lucknow to Ajmer to Manila, <laughs> back to St. Stephen, and then you go to Pens Pennsylvania, University of Pennsylvania. 
what was this journey like uh, i haven't been to these places but these are the best places that anybody can aspire to go to one after the other yeah so looking at it uh, in retrospect it looks like i had a very restless <laughs> education <laughs> and i was ready to leave the, but it wasn't like that it was basically because my parents were moving from city to city and i was following them at that age leaving your friends is a big thing that was very traumatic in fact i remember leaving india and going to the philippines was something i did not want to do mm. um but at each stage when i protested there were some good things i left behind and even greater things that were ahead so it was good that i i went to the next place and uh, absorbed a bit more uh, um even coming back to st stephen's was a great experience for me i spent a few years here in delhi university um and uh, then i finished my education in the us so you did to to one bsc in mathematics yeah. and then ba in pennsylvania yeah. why did you have to do that so actually in the us it's a four year degree and right. i had already done two years as part of my bsc here so i didn't finish my bsc here i did two years and that sort of counted towards my ba in in the us and then two more years would you years like there. to explain what is this dichotomy here you have bsc <laughs> and there you have uh, ba well at st stephen's the degree is arts yeah at st stephen's it basically meant that you worked a bit harder in the afternoons and did some science uh, practicals <laughs> while everybody else went home but um but here too at st stephen's we had a ba math and a bsc math it's just that your classes finished at 12 or at 4 depending on you know when what you were actually doing um no but in the us i think it's a ba because it's a liberal arts education and you don't do only maths it's a uh, maybe 33% of your concentration the rest of it is many other things you have to do political science and english and philosophy and so it's it, it's it makes more sense to call it a ba and for uh, phd you had to again shift to a uh, yeah phd another university uh, yes so was it uh, why did you do that uh, you that is very standard it almost never continue at the same place that you do undergraduate um, you always go to a new place so that's also good for everybody i mean you get better experience and was mathematics place. being done there where in those universities yes yes i'm sure it was remarkable yes. how does it compare with mathematics being done in in india in colleges i'm talking about not really tifr we'll come to tifr uh-huh. um so i think at every college in india there's one or two people who are doing things um at some of the iits there are many many people doing things um, at small some of the sort of liberal arts colleges like st stevens or xavier's i think there are few people who are doing things we had a very good professor um called uh, dr nakpal at um, st stevens he had his phd from harvard and he had chosen to come back to st stevens to teach and he was writing several um, excellent textbooks for instance and uh, you know not just teaching in the classroom but doing something outside the classroom as well so there are always some some people doing good things you are the only person whom i have interviewed on eureka who doesn't give credit to his interest in the subject in which he's done so excellent to his parents but to <laughs> teachers yeah. so i'm sure teachers are listening that they can shape a first class mathematician yeah. just because Dr. they Nakhla are also good. dead actually yes but <laughs> Yeah but no no my parents are have a very um uh, in shaping your life yeah, yes no and but also i would say a very hands off approach often allows a child to do what he or she wants to with his life and so i think the parents watch over you they're not you know it's not like i was becoming a drug addict or something like that i was doing i was doing mathematics <laughs> yes. and so i'm sure my parents were quite happy that i was doing something slightly unusual but slightly challenging and something quite different um so they never discouraged me i don't think they encouraged me in some very strong way they just let me be myself and do whatever i wanted to do and then from there you decide to come back to india why did you take a decision to come to tifr or there were no openings in mathematics elsewhere no. so it was very interesting actually i wanted to come back to india for a few years at least i wasn't sure that i would spend the next 20 years in india that wasn't clear at all when i finished my phd but um at that stage there was a new institute run by the department of atomic energy called the harish chandra research institute at right. that time it was still called the mehta research institute and they had just opened a beautiful campus in just outside allahabad on the banks of the ganges um so i had visited there as a student once uh, and i thought i should join there as a postdoctoral fellow so initially i had gone there I'd, i hadn't actually heard much about tifr i mean i knew about it but i hadn't yeah it wasn't in my bloodstream at that stage 
I spent about a year there, and uh, then I transferred uh, to TIFR to continue my postdoctoral work. And uh, then I joined the faculty and continued at TIFR. Now I've TIFR been has, has a very uh, strong tradition of doing fundamental mathematics. Yes. And there have been some great names yes. who were right from the beginning part of TIFR. Sure. Do you think that uh, that tradition continues there at Tata Institute of Fundamental so Research? So everybody talks about a glory, glorious period. But I think, you know, that... That is a, a viewpoint of history. I mean, looking back 30 years, one begins to appreciate certain peaks and mountains that existed. So, of course, many beautiful things were done in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. But I think that there are some things associated with TFR now that are also um, quite incredible. And uh, good things are happening there as well, even now. Um, just to give an example, um, we used to have somebody on our faculty who's actually now visiting here who um, uh, proved a very famous conjecture called Sayers Conjecture. And he used to be at TI for, for many years, 10 or 15 years, Chandrasekhar Kare. Um, and uh, maybe started working on that for many years while he was there. And it's a, it's a huge mountain in the field of mathematics. I mean, it wasn't proved for many years, 20, 30 years. Right. Um, so yeah, the, the good things coming out of TIFR still. What, what, is, uh, uh, what would you uh, pinpoint as the major contribution of TIFR? In, uh, in, in the field of mathematics? This would be one, I would say, but maybe it would right. be a little hard to take complete credit for it because um, this gentleman, for instance, did spend 10 years in the US after that. Um, it's hard to come up with any one thing. I think people are doing uh, good things in many areas. Um, I can tell you a little bit about the fields of mathematics that are right. represented. So. We have a center in Bangalore where there's a lot of um, analysis and applicable mathematics. Uh, what happens more at TIFR is pure mathematics. Uh, within that, we have uh, fields like algebraic geometry. For the joy of it? Uh, sorry? <laughs> pure, pure, pure mathematics, mathematics for the joy for of the it. Joy yes, of absolutely. It. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, uh, yeah, so we have algebraic geometry. We have a number theory, which is what I do. Um, some representation theory and lead theory, ergodic theory. But you have also worked in geometry. I uh, work mostly in number theory, but there's a lot of overlap with overlap some side, them. you know, with algebraic geometry and things like that. Yes, yes. Um, so these are some of the fields where many people are working and there's contributions being made. India has uh, always been strong as far as mathematics is concerned. There have been periods of, of uh, ups and downs, and we have had some stalwarts. Uh, in the area of mathematics. But as of now, would you say that India is in top five countries as far as mathematics is concerned? I think that would be hard to say because I think there are just not enough people in India doing mathematics. I think some of our peaks are as high as the peaks anywhere in the world, but there should be many, many more peaks and many, many more people involved in the subject. Um, we have all these new institutions coming up in the next 10 years, new IITs, new Indian Institute of Science, Education, Research, IISERs. Each one of them needs to hire not just 30 mathematicians, but 30 biologists, 30 physicists, 30 chemists. We need people. We need many, many more people to enter these institutes. We need many, many more <laughs> yeah, people yeah. to do mathematics. Thank you very much for giving so much of time to Rajya Sabha channel and Eureka. The message is, come to the fascinating world of science. There are lots of problems to be solved and humanity will develop as a result of your efforts. Thank you for watching Eureka. If you have any question, query or comment, write to us at eurekarstv at gmail.com. We will be happy to reply to you. Next week, we will come back with another outstanding scientist who has made a significant contribution to the area of science.